Yep, we're done with our DIY girls bedroom makeover on a budget. It took a total of five days of action, but months of planning. And yes, it was 100% budgeted. So join us as we show you step by step how we DIY'd our daughter's bedroom. And make sure you stick around till the end so you can see her reaction to all of it. Hi, I'm Wendy Valencia. My husband Mauricio and I decided to redo our daughter's bedroom for her seventh birthday. So about six months ago, we set our budget at around $1,500 and evaluated what we would need. We decided to cash flow it and we later decided the delivery date on the room would be Melina's seventh birthday. And yes, I know it was a fairly large budget for a family on a debt-free journey, but we wanted to do this once and do something that would last her into her teens and maybe even then we'd only need to change, you know, a few minor things, maybe new curtains or bedspread or both. And truthfully, I think we really achieved it because I can totally see this as a teenager's room when she gets older with some updating. So now that I've run my mouth, let's check out what we did. On day one, we focused on cleaning up and getting everything out of the room. Since we knew we would be taking everything out and reorganizing, we told Melina she didn't have to keep her room clean for about like two weeks prior to the actual pack out. And it is amazing what kind of disaster a child can make in just two weeks. Bye-bye, Elsa. Getting everything out of the room took about two, maybe three hours, but woo doggy, the landing got crowded and it stayed really crowded for the next two weeks. It was hard getting through there. On day two, we painted everything white. We started by putting plastic on the floor because the last thing we wanted to do was have to refinish the floor too. Don't judge that we wore the same clothes every time we dealt with paint. <laughs> we actually have clothes that are specific to painting so we don't ruin any other clothes because we ruined these. And since my shorts are actually maternity shorts, I know they're at least seven years old, but they've served us well. Once everything was painted, it was time to take down the ceiling fan and replace it with a new one. Melina's bedroom is actually the hottest room in the entire house, both in the summer and the winter, so a ceiling fan is an absolute must. But because of the type of bed we got, we knew we had to have an enclosed ceiling fan. If you saw the thumbnail, I know that you understand that this choice of fan makes perfect sense. We got this ceiling fan from Home Depot and so far it seems to be working really well for keeping the room cool. It is a bit on the loud side, but we like it. We had issues with the light switches. The previous ceiling fan was on a dimmer switch and there are actually three different switches that control this light plus a remote control. So it was very confusing. And getting all the switches back into position took like no joke about 20 minutes. Go ahead, flip the switch. I hope we don't die. Nothing. Wait. Ah! <laughs> Nothing. Da dun da da. <laughs> oh, oh, look at that. It's a loud fan. I thought it the. The high, medium, low was for the, for the light. <laughs> You're pretty. <laughs> so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take Melly to swimming and Mauricio is going to paint another coat because look, the paint definitely needed a second coat. I 
I need to definitely get in the shower first because, you know, apparently I can look like this on YouTube, but I cannot look like this in real life. We always use bare eggshell with primer, but somehow we managed to pick up the wrong can of paint the first time, so there was no primer, which was unfortunate, which means we had to paint the second coat. So Mauricio, off he ran to Home Depot. On day three, we painted the ombre well, and I was trying to keep this video a reasonable length, so I actually did a whole separate video on how we painted the ombre wall, which I'll link in the eye in the sky. It is a step-by-step -step comprehensive guide, but seriously, it was so easy. After the walls were done, we started on painting the bookshelves. Our goal was to totally transform the room, so that meant painting some of the furniture that was already in the room. Furniture I knew my parents wouldn't be taking with them. We also chained out the vent grates I don't know who put these grates in, but the holes were seriously weird sizes. Originally, we were gonna put in silver grates, but the holes only fit one size grate, and thank goodness they were white. <laughs> While we were painting the bookshelves, we did get use white gloss spray paint to touch up the top of Melina's vanity that Santa brought her last year. Note to self, no nail polish is ever allowed in a six or seven year old's room again, because when they paint, they paint their whole hand and the tabletop. And in case you're wondering, the spray paint restored it pretty much to new condition. Melina actually asked me how I got her vanity so clean. Mauricio and I had taken a day off from work to get as much done in the room as possible in addition to the weekend. And our long weekend officially came to a close and it was time to go back to work. We had the door shut and the room locked so Melina couldn't get in there and couldn't see in. But she kept trying to peek from the outside because we had taken the mini blinds down because I hate mini blinds because they are a cleaning nightmare and there was no way we were keeping them in that room. When she looked into the room from the outside, she could see that there were white walls and the back of the bookshelf, but she couldn't really see anything else, so the surprise wasn't spoiled. The following Saturday arrived and we needed to put the curtains up so Melina could not see from the outside because big changes were about to happen and we knew she was peeking. I'm gonna fess up, these curtains and curtain rods were actually <laughs> curtains and curtain rods we bought when we first moved in, but we never got around to putting them up. And now I'm kind of glad we didn't because they really actually helped the room feel completely different. We did a bit of touch up on the bookcases and we moved the bookcases to the corner. Well, that didn't go very well. The bookshelves were not 100% dry and putting the shelves back in caused some scratching and scraping, so we had to retouch the shelves again. Once that was done, we brought in the bed. And as you can see, we decided on a loft bed. I found a high-end, second-hand, full-sized loft bed on Facebook Marketplace for 300 bucks, and I was so excited. We specifically wanted a full-size one so we would not have to buy a new mattress. Since my parents told us they wouldn't be taking that bed with them, when they leave, we were able to reuse that mattress, which is a really nice mattress. The loft bed was in great condition and we just needed to put it together and fix one little tiny part, which I'll get into in a couple of minutes. So then it was time to assemble the cubbies. It's amazing to me how full the bedroom was to start and how we were actually going to be able to have even more room for storage than when we started just because we had gotten a loft bed. I got two sets of six cubbies from Big Lots for $35 each. And granted, they aren't the highest quality, but they worked for what we need them for. We may have had a few issues putting them together and there may have been arguing, but I'll admit to nothing. 
my advice to you, always read the directions. Maurizio was convinced that we wouldn't be able to get two shelves on their sides under the bed, that it would be way too crowded, and that ultimately we would want to return one set of shelves. So rather than putting the second shelf together, we decided to start on the bed. Now, I don't know if you remember that when we brought the bed in, there was a cork board backing underneath the bed. Well, that cork was loose and ripping slightly. It didn't look bad, but it didn't look new. This was the only thing that appeared to be wrong with the bed. So we looked into replacing the cork. And then Mauricio said, I wish we could just make it a chalkboard. She would like that so much more. And then I remembered seeing chalkboard spray paint at Home Depot. So back to Home Depot, Mauricio went, and we ended up painting the backside instead of replacing the cork. And it turned out beautifully. I was so pleased. Once that was done, Mauricio realized how smart his wife was and went ahead and put the second set of cubbies together because they were going to fit. Then we began to reassemble the room. We put the mattress up and we're going to use the mattress topper, but then decided against it because it made the bed way too high and we didn't want Melina like rolling off the bed. We got a loft shelf for her to use as a nightstand because we knew she would need somewhere to keep water when she slept. She always has a bottle of water next to her bed. And I found one with a solid lip on the side so stuff wouldn't get actually knocked off and fall to the ground. This one has been worth every cent because she uses it constantly. If you're like us, your kid has a ton of stuffed animals and you hate them. They are piled on the bed every night and every night you take them off and every morning you make the bed and you put them back on and every night you take them off. It's a pain, but you have to keep them because getting rid of them would be too much to ask of your child because they're attached. So in steps, the stuffed animal storage bean bag, which I love. Fill it with stuffed animals and get a handy dandy bean bag. Want to play with them? Unzip the zipper and take them out. And it's actually surprisingly comfortable. I found these adorable lights that matched perfectly. They did come from China, so they took a really long time to get here but I think they made this under the bed area just totally adorable. Then we took an old plate rack, you know, one of those things that you use to display plates on a wall, and we decided to make it a ribbon holder and a tiara holder. All it really took was some of the ribbon that we had on hand from the curtains and a glue gun and about, you know, five to 10 minutes of work. You'll see this pink polka dotted ribbon in several other little projects. We used it throughout and I feel like it really tied the whole room together. Then it was time to go through her toys and bring them back into the room. Over the last two years, she has been given so much American Girl doll stuff that we decided she should only keep her American Girl doll stuff in her bedroom and everything else needs to go into her play area, which we'll be cleaning out in our next video and Lordy was it pitted. And in case you're wondering, I've never had an issue with getting rid of stuff. I'm sure Melina will have to be in therapy for years from all of the stuff I have gotten rid of over her lifetime. But if it annoys me, it disappears from the house. Does anybody else have a child that could be considered a hoarder with all the trash that they keep? Then it was time to start putting the American Girl doll stuff on the shelf. I figured that if we stored everything on an open shelf rather than in the bins, she would use the shelves more like an additional dollhouse rather than just toy storage. And remember, because we painted the shelves in place, we were kind of stuck with the shelf heights that we had selected. And we actually ended up being totally fine. Once that was done, we started putting on the final touches.
One of our issues in her old bedroom was a nightlight. Melina needed a little light at night so she wouldn't get nervous, but we hadn't found one that worked exactly the way we wanted. So we ended up opting for this super cool Philips Hue Smart Light, and it is perfect because it's adjustable and it can be dimmed to super low and then brightened to super high. But I'll warn you, it was spendy. So I'll put a link down in the description box if you want to check it out. And then we put a partial strand of ribbon into the dream catcher, which we had custom made on Etsy. Melina had been asking for a dream catcher for months and months and months. And so we got this one to match her room and my mother made a few little tweaks here and there so it matched the room perfectly and we love it. So on the pillows, you can actually see the ribbon on the edges on her name pillows, which just totally brought those little shams up a whole level and really tied them into the room. I think the hardest thing of the whole room, you know, redoing her room was actually making the bed. So this is what happened when we showed her. No, just go climb up it. What do you see in your bed? Look on your pillows. My name. Oh my goodness, you want to see this? Ow! Look at what's hanging there. You see that? Oh, jeez, Isn't it beautiful? Okay. <laughs> hey, loose is light in, in Spanish. 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 You can use Spanish. You guys are awesome. So, I'll see you in the next one. See ya. We're out.